What's everybody? Welcome to the Baron Williams Trump Show. I am Baron Williams Trump. Yeah, I'm Baron Williams Trump. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about music and the fact that I'm a musician. We're going to be talking about my music. So um, I've created music in several different categories, such as rap music. I've created many albums in rap music category. I created many albums in the R&B music category. I created many albums in the pop music category. I created many albums in the rock and roll music category. I've created many albums in the alternative rock music category. I've created many albums in the gospel music category. I created many albums in the traditional music category, such as um, holiday musics, like Christmas songs, that type of stuff. And I've created many albums in the festive music category, such as um, birthday songs and things of that nature. Um, I've created many albums in the country music category. And I even created my own category of music in order to create music too. And then created many albums in the category that I created, which is music and press. So now I want to talk about um, what is music compressed. Music compressed is where you compress information into the contents of the album that you're creating. So let's say, for example, um, I have a title and the title to my album is The Greatest Summer Ever, right? The, and the theme is to talk about the greatest summer ever, right? So the concepts will be 20 different variations of what makes this the greatest summer ever. So basically what music compresses is it compresses all of the information regarding every summer and all of the best activities in summer into that one album. So if there's 20 songs on the album, it's 20 different opportunities to hear you know, of that theme, of that subject matter, of that title. Now I want to talk a little bit about parental advisory. Um, there uh, used to did not be parental advisory and then um, lyrics were monitored and parental advisory was added to um, profane lyrics. Now I want to talk a little bit about contradictory music. So contradictory music is Let's say you purchase an album and the album has a title and the title to that album says um, the best um, opportunity ever, right? And and so like you open up the album and you listening to, you know, the album, the best opportunity ever and, and you're not, it's it's no opportunity for you. Like you're not, you're not, you're not feeling like you're gonna walk away from an hour and a half of your life successful, and so like basically, you you open up the album and it's talking about the best opportunity, but it doesn't so it doesn't have not even one opportunity in there for you to advance, and the album is completely contradictory to to what the theme is. So it, there's absolutely no opportunities, and in fact. A person says that they're talking about opportunity, but when they start talking, they're talking about, um, let's say, a missing pet that they're looking for or something. Like, what does that have to do with opportunity? You know what I'm saying? So, basically, what I'm what I'm talking about now is why people stopped listening to FM radio. There came a time when people started listening to AM radio. Talk radio became good. A lot of anchors moved into talk radio and now radio has replaced talk radio has replaced a lot of the fm radio and the reason is because of contradictory music individuals having a title that they're supposed to be talking about but they're not talking about that title we we start hearing a lot of contradictory music when artists started mixing r&b with hip-hop and um a lot of the Hip hop artists that will get on an R and B song will have something totally contradictory to what the the, the song title was about. Um, but just because of the popularity of the hip hop artists, um, it went and went, you know, to um, 
a record high as far as platinum sales. But this right there just started making people become more aware of music. Even though parental geysery had been added to music labels. So this started making people question music altogether. Like, why am I even listening to an hour worth of this when I can listen to an hour worth of that? And that being AM Talk Radio. So individuals started looking at the fact that what they were supposed to be getting in three minutes and five minutes was contradictory to their own belief system. So individuals was like, why should I even listen to three minutes or five minutes of, of anybody's album at this point? You know, um, whether it's rap, R&B, pop, rock and roll, alternative rock, gospel music, traditional music, festive music, country music, or, or, or any type of genre of music, right? Why should I even spend three to five minutes? Well, Let's say you go to the store and you purchase um, an apple, right? And you're like, "Wow, this was a really good apple. It was, it, it was a little bit of, it was crisp, it was sweet, um, it was nutritious. It had a little bit of bitter tang to it, but overall, it was a, it was a very great apple, right? And so, like, basically, you just want more of that because you know that this is an apple." Versus going to a store and purchasing a, a juice with concentrated apple um, uh, label. Like, you don't know if this is apple juice. It it's, doesn't even say apple juice. It's apple flavor. So, so like, you know, you know, when you eat an apple, you're eating an apple. And you know when you're drinking something that says apple on it, you're drinking something. You know what I'm saying? So, like, basically, people started looking at their music like that. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at the type of, at the, at the subject or the theme of this album, but should I spend $15 on this album right here, $18 on this album for a contradictory music or, or parental advisory or even three to five minutes of my own time going down the drain? Um, I'm, I, if I feel like I need some opportunity, Maybe I should just go to AM radio and listen to somebody that has an opportunity for me. So self-help came out and self-help um, books turned into inspiration books and individuals turned their TV um, on and, and, and seen a lot of contradictory in the artists and turned their radios from FM to AM and then turned their TV off. A lot of individuals who were doing TV started going into radio when Sirius radio came out and satellite radio came out then you see TV hosts even major TV talk show hosts turn into radio opposed to having just TV stations and and so like you know I came up with the my own genre of music for the simple fact that I would like to um give individuals the opportunity to remain in music like like individuals should not have to stop purchasing albums and listening to complete records um just because of a few incidents in music so i came up with a couple of things called the image merger in order to save music in the fm you know category of the radio and i came up with another little solution to music which is called mixed tune and then I came up with my own category of music called Music Compress. And so what the image merger is, let's say you're like me. I started out as a hip hop. I started out as a rap artist first and then I went to hip hop and then I went to R&B and then I went to pop and then I went to rock and alternative rock and I always was in gospel, traditional music and festive music and then I went to country music and now I'm in Music Compress. It was like, you know, I kept all of my audience of individuals. I have like over 80,000 or 100,000 individuals who listen to me in person, live, uh, versus um, the type of individuals that you would um, find that has like a cell phone and on their cell phone, it says that they have 60,000 people that's following them. Some people, 60 million people that's following them. 
Do we really know if there's 60 million people following them? No. Do we really know if there's 60,000 people following them? No. But I know if I go to an area and there's 10,000 people and all 10,000 of those people are requesting to hear my song, then I know that I'm being listened to. If I know if I go to a to an area and there's 90 people and all 90 of those individuals are requesting to hear my album song for song, um, then I'm being listened to. So um, what I did was I merged my image as far as marketing myself, as far as promoting my album, as far as advertising my my brand. Um, I merged all of that together in my public relations package. And then I said, well, hey, maybe I need to just start talking about all of the, the audiences that I have because I do a lot of different things. I'm doing music. Okay, I'm a singer. I'm a songwriter. I'm a music composer. I'm also a professional recording artist. And I'm also a professional performance artist when it comes to music. But I'm also an actor, athlete, motivational speaker, software developer, student, teacher, founder of my own private school, the Celebrity Preparatory Academy. And now I have a university and my website's under construction. I've authored all of the school textbooks several times and revised them and taught several different classes. And all of my students have TV shows and movies and books and albums out independent artists and some of them are mainstream and a-listers even and so what the image merger is you merge if whatever type of image you have if you have an expertise whatever your hobby is give it a title make sure that um, you are aware of the fact that you can capitalize off of that there should, there should be some type of substantial lucrative income from that particular title that you that that your hobby is and if you've been doing it for 20 years then you can talk a lot about it and your experiences and I'll just give you a couple examples let's say you have really great conversations with your friends then maybe you can be a consultant you've been consulting with your friends for over 20 years maybe you can be a motivational speaker and a, and a consultant and give it that title and create an extra cash generator and so if you are a consultant and you also do music then maybe you should merge your image as a consultant and as a musician together and do like um, a little bit of motivational speaking but also uplifting music and have that much more of an audience. So now you have, let's say, 100,000 people listening to you which gives you a gold like label when it comes to music. But let's say you have a million individuals that's listening to you as a motivational speaker and a consultant. Now you're a platinum artist. And so the image merger gives you a whole nother art audience that you typically wouldn't have. And I found that a lot of individuals who merged their image from business, um, um, talking about their fashion lines, talking about their business endeavors talking about their own goods as far as the products that they advertise along with the service of the music that they're providing they've been more successful in generating sales from their stock inventory and this boosts their brand up you get that extra um sense when it comes down to your 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 financial royalties and this right there is just a smart tool to use the the, the image merger merger every image that you have together and one when you're doing your music and 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 that right there made people want to listen to me because they wanted to listen to me because of my music but they also wanted to listen to me because I had other images um, back in the 90s and the 80s individuals had to have gimmicks had to have um, movements had to have um, images they had to have fads they had to have all of these different things in order to be recognized in the industry. And I just was always an authentic individual. Like, I had reality music before it was called reality music. And I just talked about reality. Um, a lot of the times I had individuals who, who uh, um, asserted the subject matter. It was in control of my... Uh, music productions but when I had an opportunity to take creative control over my own musical career then you know um, I created something called the mix tune to save music because 
um, FM radio was being turned on to AM radio. And the reason why is because of the contradictory music. Um, so when I came up with Mixed Tune, I came up with this uh, opportunity to reflect on um, the subject matter. So I would talk a little bit about... Um, I would talk a little bit about the theme of the subject, right? And um, I would re-implement that two times because people are repetitive learners. So I'm not sure if you watch news, but if you've ever watched news, they might talk about the same 10 stories in rotation the entire time. There might be even two or three different developing stories. And for the duration of the hour or the couple of hours that you're going to be listening to or watching the news, it's going to be a repetitive learning process where they're going to be repeating the same stories over. And so um, what I did was I did a repetitive type of mixed tune where I mixed in, you know, the repetitiveness with the subject matter just so individuals can stop doing the contradictory music and we can start focusing on, you know, not just how I brand with my music because, you know, I, I created my own trademark in music and my trademark is to create music for everybody, the entire family from a baby to a toddler to an adolescent to a teenager to a, um, a person who's pregnant to a young adult to responsible adult to the working class adult to the senior citizen. From a baby to a senior citizen, um, I create music for everyone. The entire family can enjoy it in every area of life, whether you're commuting in a car, whether you're listening to it on your radio, on your personal device like an iPod or a CD or a tape player, um, whether you are in the office, you're in school, whether you're outside in a performance, just music for every type of situation in all age-appropriate, radio-friendly, clean lyrics. Um, that's my trademark. And so, like, basically um, having the repetitive music, having the mixed tune, um, talking about appropriate music with my particular trademark, um, it, it, it kind of, like, did a lot for the FM side of the radio. But overall, um, individuals was like, okay, after self-help turned into inspiration books, like, you know... Um, people started thinking like maybe I should get a little bit more of what I really need instead of three to five minutes in, in the song and so they would go to 30 minutes to 50 minutes in a talk radio program with emphasis on what they're looking for if they're looking for relationships if they're looking for um, finance if they're looking for um, education then they're not looking in the form of a three to five minute song they're looking in the form of 30 minutes to 50 minute program based on specifically what they're looking for and so that's how I came up with this new task so basically there's 150 countries in the world and these 150 countries make up the sovereign countries so I believe in creation I believe that God said let there be light and then there was light before that there was a mass darkness that the Holy Ghost hovered over um, a lot of individuals believe in science um, as far as matter, um, creating things that matter, um, it, and, you know, evolution is another theory and all of these other different things. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing as the, in the beginning of the day. It's what you require from what you desire. And so, um, basically, um, over time... Uh, uh, the first man who lived on the planet Earth populated. Um, there was a, a separation uh, over a long period of time between people. There came a time where everyone spoke the same language and um, we all lived on the planet Earth, right? And then there was a separation. There was a um, confusing of the language and individuals went to the seven continents that we know now to live and um, the seven continents developed their own identities and their own languages within these several con in, in these seven continents and so um, you have Jews living on earth 
you have Christians living on earth, you have different tribes of Judaism and um, Christianity who have populated the earth, but then we also have the identity of what's called sovereign governments. And so you have the reality of God and God's people who live on earth and they have a right to go you know, through the earth and, and live their life. And then you have the sovereign um, identities of uh, the areas in which individuals went to after the Tower of Babel, right? So if you're looking in terms of um, personal identity, I'm a United States citizen. So my president is President Donald John Trump and my country is the United States of America. But when you look at other countries and um, their governments and their laws and their education and their travel and their um, travel experiences and tourist attractions and the rates for motels and hotels and travel accommodations and round trip ticks, tickets and visa requirements and you know, just how they respond to Americans and, um, you know, how, how much they know about, you know, Jews and how much they know about Christians and how much they know about America, which is our sovereign identity. That's a huge topic right there. And if you think in terms of parenting today, um, no responsible parent's going to say, well, you know, to their toddler or to their, you know, um, adolescent, that they can just go outside and go down the street and all around the corner to anybody's house that they feel like they can go to. It doesn't work like that. Children are monitored in their backyard. And when children become a little bit older, can be supervised and monitored in their front yard. Okay. And so um, in terms of being a complete person, it's like, okay, one reaches a teenage year or an adult year and becomes a man and a woman right um you you uh, uh, you know with the men grow up women grow up whether you are a man or a woman you grow up and you you get an opportunity to to go through the united states of america as a united states citizen where you where you please to go but just because you travel through the United States of America does not prepare you for the travels outside of America. So there's several countries, there's at least 155 separate sovereign countries that have identities that are not Jews of creation, that are not Christians of creation, um, but have obtained.